Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on what's left of this Davy Crockett locomotive from the early 1960s. This was a locomotive which I actually got for free a few years ago. Basically, somebody local was giving away a whole bunch of old model trains they had, and this was included in the lot. So as you can tell, it's missing a lot of different parts. And if you can believe it, it was actually worse at the time. I glued the chassis back together and attempted to rig up a motor. But unfortunately, uh, all the attempts to get this thing going again have been quite unsuccessful, pretty much due to the fact that it's missing so many parts. And also the fact that most of the parts that are here are in very poor condition, as you can see. So the project's pretty much been stuck for that entire time, which is too bad because this is a pretty interesting looking locomotive. And from what I can tell, is actually somewhat rare. So I've wanted to get it going, but it's just not been all that successful. Until recently, when somebody on eBay was actually selling an identical locomotive to this, which is also missing most of its parts but I believe has most of the parts we need to get this one going again. So today we're going to be trying to put two locomotives together, and if we're lucky by the end of this, this thing might ride the rails for the first time in many years, for all we know. So let's get started. Let's see what we can do here. So we'll start off by unboxing the donor locomotive. I really hope that it's in somewhat decent condition. It looked to be pretty rough in the listing, and uh, I'm not entirely sure that it even runs. But uh, we'll open it up and check it out and just kind of see what we're working with here. One thing I found intriguing about this lot is that it came with a free trying car, which if we can get this locomotive going again, I think would look very nice behind it. Now here's the locomotive itself, and as you can see, in comparison to this model, this one actually has a far better shell. However, we do have almost all the drive components, as it would appear, and everything looks to be in decent shape. So I'm really hoping that these two will go well together. We'll just have to see in a second if it will actually run. And then finally, it actually came with the original tender, which looks to be in terrific condition. So if we can get this thing going again, we'll actually have a complete locomotive. So let's uh, take this locomotive over the track. We'll see what kind of working or non-working order it's in, and then we'll go from there. I'm really crossing my fingers that this locomotive has some life left in it, because if the motor or anything else crucial to the drive is broken on this thing, we're going to be in for a lot more trouble getting it going again. But anyways, if we give it some power here... It does, in fact, seem to be trying to go. Let's crank up the voltage all the way to uh, 18 volts here. And, oh, it's trying to pull through. Uh-oh. Okay, uh, so clearly this locomotive uh, has some issues, so we're going to have to open it up. But the fact that it was trying to turn over those wheels is a promising sign. Uh, the smoke coming out of it, not so much. So we're now going to try to work our way down to the motor on this locomotive. Now, I'm hoping that this rear screw will uh, allow us to remove this shell here, and we'll be able to we'll get inside and actually uh, work on the motor. Looks like we've got a little trick there, so we'll remove this screw too, see if that does anything. All right, so there's the drive. Now what's most important here is the motor, which I can manually turn over just fine, which is good. It means that everything here is not seized. However, the coils on this motor are in fact looking quite crispy, which is a pretty bad sign. That could mean that this motor is overheated and that might be where that smoke was coming from. But about 90% of the time it's from the commutator. So we'll try cleaning the commutator and then see if that fixes the problem. But uh, this, this thing certainly doesn't seem hopeless at this point so I'll have a look here what happens over time is that carbon wears off the brushes and it actually gets caught between these plates on the commutator and when you uh, clean out these gaps it usually alleviates the uh, short circuit issue caused by that so hopefully by uh, doing this we'll be able to sort them out unfortunately this motor is actually not looking all that dirty though so I don't know if this is actually going to make any difference here Using a fiberglass pencil, we'll quickly polish up the commutator. Hmm. 
That's interesting. This locomotive has two different types of brushes. I'm guessing I'm not the first person to have worked on this engine. Oh, that's bad news. So unfortunately I've completely broken that brush and in my experience trying to get these two soldered back together is not an easy task. The good news is that a few months ago I worked on another old trying locomotive and I'm hoping that it will have the same style of brush which it just by the looks of it it does. Let's have a look here. Well, it's remarkable in almost 20 or 30 years time they hardly changed the design so we'll try to get those back in there and uh, then we'll test out this motor yeah, hopefully the results will be a little bit different this time oh yeah there we go Okay, so it does appear that we have a working motor to some extent. Of course, uh, with this controller, I have no idea what the current draw on it is, but that's definitely turning over far better than it was before. So we'll oil up this whole drive and uh, see if we can get things going again here. Um, when this thing fired up, it actually uh, threw some parts off it. I don't know what this belonged to, but uh, I'm really hoping that that was not some important insulator. Either way, we'll see what we can do. I'm also discovering that we should probably either replace that or uh, put in a new one because uh, leaving that open might be causing short circuits as well. So, uh, let's do some oil in. So we'll quickly go and uh, throw some oil down on all the bearings here. And we're also going to uh, put some right here for the motor's bearings. Now, optimally, you'd want to clean all this stuff before adding fresh oil, and we'll try to pick out any, like, little bits we can, but the unfortunate truth is that the only way to actually uh, properly clean this locomotive out would be to remove all of the wheels, which is not something I want to do. Those plastic pieces might just crack if we do that, so we're just going to try to leave that as is. We will, however, add a whole bunch of oil to the worm gear, as well as a little bit of grease. crucial that you put a good amount of lubricant, especially like a thick grease on metal worm gears, because if you don't, they'll end up just like this one did. So you can see how stripped down that gear is in comparison to the one on this locomotive. So that could have been avoided if that was lubricated properly. And of course we can't forget the drivers either. After a closer inspection, I realized that this is not actually a light fixture. I think that this is some sort of a heat element, and uh, some locomotives back then and even today uh, have an element where you can pour some oil on it, and it will actually uh, smoke out the smokestack. It's a really cool effect. I find these things are very sensitive, and they tend to break pretty easily, so uh, I don't actually have a working unit right now. But it would be interesting to see if this one is still functional or not. So I think at this point we can attempt to try to get this whole locomotive back together. Now I believe uh, the way this went was kind of like so. So now the goal is going to be just placing the shell in the same way the original was. I guess we've got to line up all three of these things at the same time. That should be interesting. Well, we got the locomotive back together by some miracle. That was a lot more difficult than I was expecting. But anyways, let's take it over to the track. Let's see if it runs. And if it does, we'll try to get all the other details on. And hopefully we'll have a locomotive by the end of this. I'm really hoping that this thing starts because I really do not feel like opening it up again. That was way trickier than it needed to be. And... Eh, we're shorted. I messed something in here up. Well, those are certainly not the results I was looking for, but uh, given the wiring situation inside this locomotive, I'm not really all that surprised. So I guess we'll just unscrew this and try to figure out what's going on with it. Looks like that came undone. Oh, okay, that stuff that was flying off the motor earlier was actually just the uh, wax coating that they put over uh, each of the poles of the armature. Well, that's good to know.
All right, by some miracle, I managed to get this all back together again. Let's take it over to the track and test it for a second time. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, I think what we're gonna do now, get rid of this. There we go. Seems to be doing what it's supposed to. Still shorted, wow. Ah, this insulator is backed up a little too far, and I think it's making contact with that one brush, which honestly is not that surprising. I bet it's going to start now. Watch this. Oh, so. Well then, I guess we'll try to get this back together again. Okay, that's more what I want to be seeing. So now we just need to get this really annoying piece back inside and uh, we might be in business, you know? All right, moment of truth. Yeah, that's more like it. Right on. I should point out too, this is a uh, double O-gauge locomotive, so the flanges are a little bit too big for this track. But uh, I think if we clean up those wheels, this might be a decent runner. got this uh, screw here for the front set of pilot wheels here but unfortunately it looks like somebody actually broke the stud off inside there so I don't know how we're gonna get that out I think we might have to drill it out Now, unfortunately, we're missing one of the boiler caps, but we have this thing, which looks pretty similar from what I can tell to the original. Anyway, I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue to uh, put this on, and uh, this should be good because if I decide to change it in the future or somebody else does, it will be very easy to take off, but it should hold it well enough and it will stay on there. And I think it looks better with it than it would without it. And there we go. I believe we have this engine all back together once again. Let's take it over to the track and see how it runs. I'm pretty confident that it's going to start, given that we've already technically run it. But, uh, you know, you never know how it's all going to perform with all these added pieces. So let's test her out here. Yeah, I can tell that that definitely has not been used in a while. <laughs> And there we go.
What do you think, Nerf Cat? Is it time to run some trains? Anyways, unfortunately, uh, this locomotive doesn't seem to run on my layout all that well. The flanges are just a little too big for the track. However, I did have some uh, original Hornby trying track laying around thanks to Mark of Eminem Rails, who uh, gave this track to me a few years ago. Anyways, uh, now that we have the proper scale of track for this locomotive and a lifelike controller all hooked up, we can actually run this thing properly. And uh, you can see when it has its right track, it's actually a pretty good runner. It goes around like a top. I am very impressed. Well, folks, I think that's going to be about a wrap for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm overall very happy with the results. You know, I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to get this locomotive going again, and we did, and it even runs half decent. Uh, but more than anything, I'm just happy to see it running, you know, at all, because this is an engine which I've had for such a long time now, and I was really unsure as to whether or not this thing would ever ride the rails once again. So to see it out here is uh, quite a nice sight. Anyways, I'd like to thank you all. So much for watching.